Welcome to Fair Game, I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today is the current UFC welterweight champion who will bring his 14 fight undefeated streak into the octagon when he faces Colby Covington on December 14th in Las Vegas. The Nigerian nightmare Kamaru Usman is here. Thank you, thank you. It's, it's so good to here. meet you. It's good to meet you. So when Dana White was putting the belt around your waist back in March, are you thinking at that time, like almost flashing back to growing up in Nigeria and Texas, like everything that you had gone through to get to that moment? Yeah, it, it, that moment is, is, it's a surreal moment because it's, it's something that you've envisioned for so long, something that you dreamt about each and every time where you go to work out and, and, and you're tired, you, you don't want to do it, but you, you find a reason, you find that inner motivation to do it. That moment kind of, it's like putting the flag on the moon, like, you know what? It all came to fruition. This is what I was doing it for. So yeah, it was, uh, it was an amazing moment. It was a moment that I will remember for the rest of my life. So you knew you were gonna be a champion one day? Yes. yes. That was not a surprise to you? That was just you fulfilling a destiny? Yeah, I, it was always something that I, I thought. That is, I'm destined for something greater. Mm -hmm. Even when I was wrestling, it, it was it, it was never really uh, winning a state championship, which I didn't accomplish. Was I? That wasn't good enough. I wanted to go on to the next one. Uh, being a national champion in college, I really wanted that. Then I achieved that, and it was like, uh, it's not it. I want more. Let's chase this Olympic gold medal. You know, unfortunately, you know, I kind of got sidelined and pulled away from that. But then it was like, oh, what's bigger than that? Let's go try to get the UFC title. So this was everything. I put everything into it, and then I achieved that. But then it's like, well, you know, we can do more. Oh. We can do more. So How'd you celebrate that night? That night, how did I celebrate? I didn't really, I couldn't really do much. I was injured, so they actually had to wheel me out of there in the wheelchair. But then I'm like, oh, I got to get out of this damn wheelchair. I, I can't be the champion of yeah. the world in the wheelchair the night. So I, I, I hob <laughs> hobbled around. I had a... Um, I had an appearance that I had to do that night, so. Yeah, you guys always have those appearances, win or lose. Yeah, so I went and uh, took care of that really quickly and uh, went back and took a bath. There's a lot of pressure that comes once you win and you're a champion, the limelight is now on you. How has your life changed since then? It's changed a tremendous amount. Yeah. I always, coming up, I always felt that, you know what, once I become champion, Everything was slow down. I need to do this extra now. I need to do this extra media, do that, do that, just to become champion or get to the opportunity to become champion. Once I become champion, it all slow down. No, it's the complete opposite. Once you become <laughs> champion, then it's the biggest thing that I realize is my time. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a five-year-old daughter, and she's uh, one of the she's the most important person to me. So I have to give her as much time as possible. So that, that kind of is interrupted when I have to have to make an appearance at this place, at that place, I have to go here, do this media tour, I have to do that. So that was one of the biggest things, it's just my time. When I was younger, I, could, I had way too much time. Mm -hmm. Now I'm 32 and it seems like every minute is accounted for. Do you like doing media? I don't mind it. I, there's a purpose to it. For uh -huh. me, it's, I'm a, I like to say I'm a pretty calculated and, and, and rational individual. So I understand this is what needs to be done in order to do that. I'm, I'm a okay. calculus guy. This right. is the formula. This is how you get the results. So, <laughs> so this isn't too bad for you. No, absolutely not. I'm here with you. Oh, come on. That can't be that bad. Thank you. I like yeah. to think this is one of the cooler media things you can do, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We've had some of your friends on this show before. You've had a few of them, actually. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. One in particular. Tyron. Tyron Woodley. Tyron rapped with me at the end of the show. Are you, are oh, you going to rap with me? I mean, you want to rap? If you, if you want to rap. Apparently, I can ad lib at a very high level. Oh, That's really? what Tyron said That's to what, me. Okay. Yeah, so we'll see. How's your relationship with Dana White changed? It's changed because now it's, um, I'm not just, an, I'm still an, pretty much an employee, but at the same time, it's more of a business partnership relationship now. Explain. So that's kind of how how things change. Once you become champion, you know now things have to be built around you. So you have more when control have to, now. Uh, somewhat. Uh, what do you mean? Somewhat. You'd like to think that I have more more control, but at the end of the day, you know they're in the business of making the fights. Okay. So they still have to make the fights. 
Are you getting and the fights you want? I'm in the business. I, I don't. I'm the champion. I don't care who they put up. Oh. All I need is them to put somebody up for me to defend. Okay. Because you don't fight, you don't make money. So. And have they been doing that in a way that you want them to? Uh, it is what it is. I mean, they they do. At the end of the day, the most important thing is getting the fight that I I, I want, and that's next in front of me. And they're doing a they're doing a pretty good job of that because. We've got a special treat for me next. We've got, yeah. a, we've got a special fight for me next. Yeah. So. There's a lot that's going into this fight, both in the octagon and outside of it. Absolutely. A, a lot of a lot of talk here. Colby is um, very political and he supports Donald Trump. You, on the other hand, said, quote, that you will put the wrath of every immigrant in this country on Colby. How much of that is serious and how much of that is it hype? I'm not a, and I guess that, that might be the knock on me, is I'm not uh, just talk trash just to talk trash. Okay. Like I said, I'm, I'm kind of rational to a fault in a sense because I, I'm, I say what I mean and I mean what I say. And, and I meant that because he, he's kind of, he's a guy that built his persona on just saying whatever he wants to say. And you know, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not a big political guy. I don't. I don't know a ton about politics, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I do. Mm -hmm. But even our president nowadays kind of says certain things that the standard that we hold a president to, those wouldn't be the things that you want them to say. So he's kind of Kobe's kind of following that same format, and, and he's trying to build off of that. And I feel like the whole agenda is pushing separation and division. We're all one race, we're a human race. Doesn't matter if you're white, black, Hispanic, Indian, African, Chinese, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We're one race and I feel like the agenda is to separate and divide us. And so, um, you know, I have, to, I have to remind him, I have to remind this young man and whoever else follows and, and is listening that, you know, in this country, this country is built off of immigrants. Americans are immigrants. Mm -hmm. You know, when did we lose that message? When did we feel like, oh, it's just a master, it's just Americans, that's it. You know, American is this person. No, Americans are immigrants. And, you know, this country is built off of immigrants. So when did we get to the point where it's like, we need to divide, we need to push this immigrant out or that immigrant or, or separate. And so I feel like that's what he's pushing. That's what he's trying to say. And I need to let him know that I am more American than he is. I am absolutely more American than he is. Why is that? First and foremost, I'm an immigrant who came here, worked his tail off to get to where I am. I did everything right. I didn't cheat anybody. I didn't lie. I didn't do you know any of the, the things that they're trying to say immigrants do. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any of that. I paid my dues and I got what he wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm sitting up here and he's down here looking up at me. So I need to remind him that I am more American than he is. I'm the one living the American dream. Because he didn't have to go through what you did. No, to, absolutely to not. He's never experienced anything that I've experienced. He's never mm -hmm. seen what I've seen. He's never walked the road, that, the path that I've walked. I feel like he's a, he's a guy of privilege. So he feels like he should be the champion. He feels like he should be awarded these things or given these things. And you see him, he'll do interviews and he'll say, oh, Dana White owes me this. I, I deserve this. I deserve that. You're like he's deserving. entitled? Like he's entitled. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not deserving of anything. You have to earn it. And I've earned that. That's why I am, I am the undisputed champion. And he is a former interim you know, champion. He's a trash talker. He said that he would guarantee that he would knock you out in the first three rounds and said he wants to cripple you. Is that taking it too far? Mm. I mean, he doesn't have limits. Okay. That's what I mean, he doesn't have limits. So that, that's good for him. If he wants to cripple me, that, that's great. That's Would what you I want. ever say that about someone? No, because I mean, physically, I, I, I'm still a human being, I have a heart. I know that he has a mom and dad. Mm -hmm. You know, Not that I necessarily care for him, but I mean, I might feel a little bad later if I cripple them. Yeah. You know, I'll give it a couple of months. I might feel bad. But, you know, initially, um, I'm going in there to obviously try to separate him from consciousness. 
And if the referee doesn't get in there and save him, then he might have some serious damages done to him. Separate him from consciousness. Absolutely. I've never heard it put that way. Absolutely. It sounds very sophisticated. Well, sophisticated individual. <laughs> Ooh, okay, we'll have more when we come back. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game on FS1, to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.